Right, good evening. I'd now like to bring the regular evening meeting of the Township of Langley Council to order. And uh, the first item on the agenda is the adoption and receipt of the agenda items. Councillor Fox moves it. Seconder. Councillor Sparrow. All those in favor? Opposed and carried. And next item is the adoption of the minutes of the regular evening council meeting of November 27th and the public hearing meeting of November 27th. Councillor Fox moves it. Seconder. Councillor Davis. Any errors or omissions? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed. Carried. And we um, uh, thank you all for coming. We do have a presentation, and it's the D.W. Poppy Secondary School Choir. I'd like to welcome um, Wayne Alb Ablett and the choir here today. Wayne is the uh, director of music at uh, D.W. Poppy, and uh, they're going to uh, perform two Christmas songs. So uh, I'd like to welcome you to come down. And members of council, there are seats reserved in the front where we can uh, relocate to and, and listen to the songs. And thank you very much for coming out.
All right, that was, uh, that was an excellent way to start a meeting. And um, our next um, item on the agenda, uh, delegations, and uh, Ms. Amy Hennessy is here uh, from the Empower Me to give us a presentation on the Empower Me program. Please come forward. And I will put your mic on. Did you have a presentation to put up? Okay, just let you get that sorted out. No? Yeah. Your Worship, and esteemed councillors, um, and lucky audience that gets to hear other people sing, but not us. Sadly, <laughs> not sadly, actually. Um, I'm Amy Hennessy. I'm program, man program development manager for Empower Me. And the lovely lady next to me is Kylie Valley. She's one of our energy mentors. And we're really happy to update you about um, the Empower Me program, tell you about it, and um, give you s some examples of our workings in Langley right now. So as you likely know, Langley has been growing faster than the rest of Metro Vancouver for about the past decade. And your immigration has been growing faster too. So where immigration has increased about 31% in Langley, it's only about 24% in the rest of BC. So I'd like you to think just for a minute of what it would be like to be one of those new Canadians who just landed in the township of Langley and you're settling into your home and, um, and you've maybe never lived in a Canadian home before, ever. You've, you've likely never had forced air, maybe never had to use a thermostat. You probably have never had garbage delivered to your, or taken away from your curb, not garbage delivered to your curb. Um, and <laughs> not even in Langley. And um, you, you probably don't know anything about recycling. And, and maybe you've never used a smoke alarm before. So that's where Empower Me comes in. We're helping people to understand the programs that are in Township of Langley and in BC. We're, we're an energy conservation and behavior change program that's aimed at new Canadians. So this multilingual, diverse communities. We help them understand energy bills, energy choices, and teach them how to save energy, save money, and increase the comfort and safety of their homes. Empower Me breaks through language and trust barriers by delivering messages through trusted peers, our energy mentors like Kylie. And because of the trusted relationship our mentors have with the communities, we successfully get these, these messages to them that they're likely not receiving in any other way. Oops, I forgot to do that. So there was this one was really pretty that I missed. Okay. So um, Empower Me started in 2012 with an idea and a sign-up sheet and a Gurdwara, which is a Sikh temple. Our founder wanted to make sure that energy conservation programs were available to everyone, regardless of their circumstances or language. And we're still around. We're delivered in communities, in homes, and in language. We started working with Langley in October. Um, and in Langley, as in all communities, we work hard to get where the new Canadians are. We target and attend events. Many are invite-only or faith-based. And we attend events when the township asks us to as well. We work hard to increase awareness and understanding of energy and city programs and basic life in Canada, track and report on our awareness, track data that our partners ask us to track, and also we track <laughs> and record actual energy savings. In Langley, we're talking about energy programs and rebates that the township makes available. We're talking about the pres precious resource that is drinking water. We're talking about waste, reducing waste, recycling, composting, and fire safety. So when mentors talk to program participants about fire safety, and if they find in a home that there's not a working smoke alarm, they connect them with fire services who will go and install one. So good evening. My name is Kylie. 
that um, Amy already introduced me. So thank you very much for allowing us, giving us time. So from, uh, I would like just to re, uh, remind everybody, we are a program that's very inclusive. We're not exclusive. Although we do bring in in-language service, we bring to everybody, not only just about uh, our knowledge about our Canadian home or assistant. Also, we do tell people everything, all the service that we have in Lenly. I just want to quickly talk about like um, my experience um, today. Actually, I was earlier this morning at uh, Walnut, Walnut Grove Community Center. I met a really nice gentleman, and he told me he is a new immigrant, although he has been here for 50 years. <laughs> he liked to refer himself a new immigrant from Scotland. So I was talking to, to him about the home safety, the fairness, and about the uh, fire safety as well. So those information, and not only from uh, our, that we are bringing for, let's say, Chinese community, Korean community, we bring to the residents that's in Township Lenny. And I would like to bring up one case, like in particular, that I served. Um, this champion, her name is Anna Quinn, and she moved to Canada, I say in Lenly, for about six to seven years. And when I visited Anna at the end of October, I talked to her about fire alarm, fire safety, carbon monoxide alarm, all those things. And um, not long after I got her phone call, I got a phone call from Anna on October 30th. And she told me, Kylie, I actually have an issue. I smoke the gas at my place. And I just and it started yesterday. I don't know what to do. So I called the contractor. The contractor came. The first thing he said is like, you need to you need to replace your furnace. That was it. He convinced her to sign a new contract to replace the furnace, then just laugh. And the house still smell like gas. So she called me the next day, like, because the in here is only Anna and her daughter. So I, I talked to her, I say, this is wrong. Please, first thing, get out of the house. Call for to BC. And I will be there as soon as possible to see what's going on. And, and I was so happy. I do, and I, in our program, I do believe if that wasn't taken care right away, and especially the contractor was going to come back in a week, just left the house full of gas, we don't want to even to start imagining what's going to happen. And Anna would never get a service or get any of those information if, if, it we're, if, if it's not because of empowerment program, if it's not an in-service program. Also, we, uh, two weeks ago, I met a, a nice gentleman called me, and he's from China as well. Uh, when I met him, originally he didn't want to sign up the program. He was saying, I just recently obtained a realtor license. I know everything. There's nothing you can do for me. So I told him, you know what? Why don't you give me a chance? I can, I can tell you what I know. There's, there's no harm for you. You don't need to give me any information. Let me see what else I can do for you. And it turned out he didn't know he has, um, it, uh, he has a gas um, uh, watch tank. He thought it was an electric one. He didn't know his furnace was about to be replaced. He, there were a few issues that they don't know. And for us, we don't judge. We don't tell people, you have to do this, you have to do that. We deliver the service, we deliver a message, and we tell everybody, everybody's different. Every home is different. We do the best what we can. Let's help you. But then the rest, we hope you, we, all, all we can hope for is you live in a safe and comfortable environment that's make your Canadian home sweet home. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I do think that Kylie might have saved a life there. Anyway, we, um, we have just started with Langley. We have a one contract with you to begin. Uh, we will be going to different events in the community, doing home visits, and um, these are all free of service to the people who participate because of the generous sponsorship of the Township of Langley. And we'll report in, on the municipal messages that we discussed before. And um, we are working with the welcome wagon right now, you have a real welcome wagon person in Langley, which is something to be proud of. 
Um, we're working with the Langley Libraries and the community centers. We visited the local temple, which is actually across the line in Cloverdale, but Langley residents go there. And we're working with the Chinese church now. The program tends to have a snowball effect when we get started. We're still working to find our toehold here, but once we get going, we find that everybody gets very excited and they want all their friends and neighbors to participate and they start doing PR for us. So we're looking forward to that. Our goals for the year in Langley are 125 champions and 750 empowered people. And we call someone empowered when they've had a conversation with us that enables them to make an energy-saving change. So a behavior in their home, maybe wash with cold water or turn their thermostat down, or to, to take part in a rebate program. So by this time, you might be wondering, how can I help? How can I get involved? And you can. So all of you in this room know your community better than anybody. So please talk about the program. The more people who know that Empower Me is offered in the township of Langley, the better. Tell people about it. Help them access the program. Encourage them to tell their friends about their program. Kylie and I are going to leave some postcards tonight, and we have our business cards, um, and we are happy to share information, and we're... Stop, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Let's do that. Yep. So um, thank you very much for your kind attention. We will be back next year to give you an update on how we're doing. Great. Well, thank you very much for so that. Thank you. I don't know if there are any questions. appreciate the work you do. I don't think... No. Councilor Arneson yep. has a question. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for coming. Oh, sorry, I'll back off the mic. Um, uh, do you work at all through the new to BC program? We do. Oh, per yes. perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because there are a huge pool of people that I think that you could be very helpful to. Yeah, and you have such amazing people at your library. They tend to congregate at the library, and they've got a program of volunteers going out in the community that are also going to be talking about our program. Uh, yeah, we have the library champions, so that's yes. a great yeah. program. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Th thank you. Councilor Quali. Thanks, Amy and Kylie. Thanks. Thanks for being here. I'm glad this is finally coming together. I first learned about this opportunity last year at uh, LMLGA in Harrison, and I'm glad Ryan Schmidt from um, the uh, engineering department is able to s help facilitate this. I guess maybe through, I guess through Mayor Frost, perhaps to Ryan or to you, you can talk a little bit about how you're going to get the messaging out electronically, because I think a lot of folks have trouble. Are there ESL, right? So popping on the website, it's not as simple as just visiting the website and seeing it in English. Is that's, there? That's true. So we, we do use our social media, but that tends to be much more for our, our sponsors, to be honest, and our, um, our, than our participants. We tend to be in places where these people go. So Kylie's delivering her presentations in language. We're going, to, like she was telling me today at um, Walnut Grove Community Center, so she's just greeting people in language, right? And so yeah. you know how that is when you're visiting somewhere and um, you don't speak the language and you hear a little bit of yours, it turns you right around initially. So we're going to places like that. Feel free to jump in. The, the churches, the community centers, a lot of the immigrant settlement services have conversational circles when people are learning English. So we send our mentors there, and they're speaking in language. Kylie, what's your first language? My first language is Mandarin. Okay, so there's yeah, a lot of you. opportunity here in yeah. the township. Yes. Are you a local resident? No, I'm not. I'm from New Westminster. Okay, but, well, yeah. close enough. I'll look forward to seeing you around <laughs> town you. in the next few months. So thanks for your presentation tonight. Thanks, Ryan, for that. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, thanks for your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And for what you do. Okay, the next uh, item reports to council, and we have uh, bylaws for first and second reading. F1 is official community plan amendment and rezoning application 100135, development permit 100836 and 100837, bylaw 5325 and bylaw 5326, Westmont Homes. Uh, Councillor Fox, seconder, Councillor Long, any discussion on F1? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Oh, sorry. Okay, Councillor Fox. Uh, thank you. If I could, through you to staff, um, page number two, uh, prerequisite um, 8B, uh, prohibiting garages from being developed for purposes other than parking of vehicles and prohibiting the development of secondary suites within individual units. So does that mean for this uh, whole proposal 
that there will be no secondary suites. Um, I know it's it's relatively small, but uh, seeing as its geographic area is relatively squeezed in here, um, maybe through you, Your Worship, to Mr. Seffi, is that put all secondary suites out in any of the uh, homes constructed in this particular subdivision? Mr. That is correct, Your Worship. That's based on the uh, the type of housing that is being proposed. It's uh, strata development with townhouses and uh, and strata uh, lots that do not uh, provide for secondary suites. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Worship. I just want to confirm um, through you to staff that the comments of the Yorks and Watershed Creek Group have gone forward to planning staff for their consideration prior to it going to a public hearing. Mr. Seffi? Uh, Your Worship, uh, I believe Councillor Arneson is referring to comments received from the Yorkson Watershed uh, Enhancement Society by the applicant as part of their public information meeting, and those have been copied to township staff and uh, uh, have been considered or, or will be considered as part of the process going forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call a question on F1. Carries unanimously. And we move on to F2, rezoning application 100483, Thunderbird Center, bylaw 5328. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Davis, seconder. A second. Councillor Fox, and discussion. Councillor Fox. Yeah. Um, I guess I have a lot of concerns about this because it's, it's kind of a here we go again scenario. Um, we had a a similar application come forward, and um, maybe through you, Your Worship, to Mr. Backen, about a year ago, I think, or 12, 14 months ago. Mr. Backen, do you recall? For this development, yes. For this one? Right. And um, at that particular time, there was, an, I think, an estate wine store located here, and we heard back from several residents that um, clearly stated that um, the, to move the liquor license from um, where it presently is over there would certainly compromise the ability of the proponent of that particular store to maintain a, a viable business and, and a living, make a living at it. Now, I, I'm not sure, maybe uh, if, if uh, I could through you to Mr. Seffi or someone, is that estate wine store still there? Mr. Seffi? Uh, no, Your Worship, uh, it has moved from that location. It has moved or closed, I wonder. Okay. That's understanding is that it has moved to another location. All right. So the situation here is that uh, presently there's a liquor store on this map here that's, that's um, can, can you point it out? Um, I, I guess it's by that C-3A. That's the Sandman Hotel uh, over here. And um, the, the proposal is to move it over to the CD-29. The challenge is, A, um, my understanding is that it's not the desire of the present owner of the, of the CD, C-3A facility that this be moved. And the second thing is, if it is moved um, over to the CD-29 Thunderbird um, Center, it then can't be, another license can't be relocated there because it's within the kilometer of the newly relocated license. So uh, the point here is we're kind of moving it a short distance over to benefit a one person so a development or one development at the expense of another development um, where it's, I would have to say, in my experience, is comfortably located at this point in time. I have a, I have a great deal of difficulty with this because I don't think that uh, this is the way we want to do business. Uh, in this particular situation, I understand that liquor licenses licensees are very uh, coveted. They're they're sought after. They draw business. They do all of the above. But if we put it over there, it draws business there and takes business away from the existing facility. So, my, my I can't support this the way it's presently structured. I think if they want <coughs> some form of a licensed facility over in CD29, well, 
You've got to pay by, play by the rules. You don't take from one person, move it over to your place, and tell the other person by law you can't have anything. Um, I'm just not in agreement with that. So I won't support this in first and second reading. There's no use going to public hearing as far as I'm concerned because I think that it's, it's the wrong way to do business. Thank you. Councillor Richter. Yeah, I, we dealt with this in September of 2016, and um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the current location, so I'm not going to support it either. Thank you. Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, through you to staff, I did have a couple of questions. They're more of a social nature. Uh, so given the staff report, and it indicates, I believe, that the liquor store would be located next to the grocery store. So I did wonder if uh, we had any local experience about what that looks like with potential respect to a nuisance factor, such as panhandling, if, you know, that's something that, that we've anticipated. And I guess my follow-up question would be um, something quite different has happened between now and last year, which is potentially that marijuana sales will be happening at liquor stores. So I'm wondering if that is something we should be anticipating at this time in terms of our, our review of this application. Mr. Seffi, do you have any comments on that? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. There aren't any... Uh uh, sort of uh, existing uh, concerns that staff is aware of in terms of uh, either panhandling or, or unwanted, undesirable activity. And uh, if that was to be the case, I guess the, the property owners would be uh, most affected and most desirous of, of uh, making sure that there are measures in place to, to mitigate that and to avoid it. Uh, having said that, Your Worship, this is a... Uh, a matter of, uh, I guess, uh, land use and zoning that's in front of council. The actual uh, allocation of, of licenses is, as you know, a uh, matter of jurisdiction of the province. Uh, the fact that it's being relocated from an existing uh, location in close proximity is, I guess, something that the province is, is interested in and, and has jurisdiction, as well as criteria around in terms of the one kilometer uh, requirement, but that's not something that, that the Township of Langley has. Okay, thank you. Councilor Qualley? Thanks. Uh, I'm not going to support the application to first or past first reading. I think um, we've already dealt with this several months ago, and I think not only to Councilor Fox's point about the proximity for another liquor store to go into the existing location, but it also moves the proximity over and would preclude anything else from happening uh, within a kilometer of that new area. So the people, perhaps there's some licenses parked. I don't know what's going on over there, but I think um, it's fine where it is and um, same as a year ago when we moved it. I think we should just leave it the way it is. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question on F2. And it, um, motion fails with Councillor Richter, Councillor Fox, Mayor Froze, Councillor Qualley, Councillor Sparrow, Councillor Davis, Councillor Long opposed. We we'll move on to um, bylaws for first, second, and third reading. This is G1, the 2018 Revenue Anticipation Borrowing Bylaw, Bylaw 5329. Have our motion, please. Councillor Davis, seconder. Councillor Fox, discussion on G1. Seeing none, call the question on G1. Carries unanimously. We want to bylaws for consideration of third reading. It's rezoning application 100476, Wagner Hills Farm Society, and bylaw 5313. Motion, Same. Councillor Fox, second by Councillor Sparrow. Councillor Fox. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. I just wanted to say I'll wholeheartedly support this. I think this is an excellent uh, project, and I think that it, it's going to serve our citizens who need support, help, in uh, times of need very, very well in our community. It's nice to see it over doubling its capacity. I know the quality of work these people do over, have done over the years with um, people who are living with challenges, addictions, and other issues. And I think that um, this speaks highly to the, to the work that they've done that they need to expand at, at such a significant uh, rate. So I... Um, they operate the Wagner Farms. They have the ladies one down on 216th, which uh, a lot of people spoke about and had concerns initially, but we've never heard a peep from since. I think they run a very, very nice operation. So I look forward to supporting this. 
and having them move forward with a great project. Thank you. Any further discussion? Oh, seeing none, I'll call a question on each one. Carries unanimously. Oh, we move on to the Mayor and Council report and the year in review. So let me get to my report here. And I'll first start off while he's getting the year in review up and running. I'll just give a brief uh, summary of uh, uh, what's happened over the last couple of weeks, and I'll move into the year in review. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, a few events that I, along with Council, attended over the past couple of weeks uh, started with the Day of Giving that took place on Tuesday, November the 28th. Uh, several appreciation events happened throughout the township, and I was happy to participate in the breakfast at the Langley Event Center, flipping pancakes. And I know Councillor Long was flipping pancakes at the Legion, and uh, I don't know if anybody else is out there flipping pancakes, but we all. Oh, we had so many, so many volunteers. I know you. I stopped. I stopped in. Yeah, great. And there were hot dogs sold at the uh, Save On and Walnut Grove. Uh, I stopped by there, so I was eating pancakes and hot dogs all day long. A lot of money was raised and a lot of awareness for some really good charities, and uh, we've got a very kind, giving community. I hope you went for a run afterwards. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. <laughs> On uh, Thursday, November 30th, was the Chambers, uh, our local uh, Langley Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours Mixer, and it was followed by the Langley Emergency Volunteer Appreciation Dinner and the Big Brothers Big Sisters Charity Auction. So a busy day that day, and uh, great to see. And that charity auction uh, that uh, I know was uh, put on at the Murrayville Pub, they raised a lot of money. It was amazing. Uh, so great for Big Brothers, Big Sisters. On Friday, December 1, was the annual Christmas in Williams Park opening night. I'd like to thank all the volunteers who make this happen every year and encourage everyone to take some time to drive through there. I think it's open until the 15th. Is that, does anybody know? I think it's the 15th. Yeah, so the 15th is, uh, of December is the last night. So certainly get out there and take a look. It's, it's quite uh, fantastic. On December the 5th uh, was the kickoff of the Aboriginal Business Match at the Langley Event Centre. And I was uh, able to attend and give uh, greetings on behalf of Township of Langley. And on Friday, December 8th, Councillor Fox and I attended the Housing First Innovation Labs at Kwantlen Polytechnic University, where uh, housing was discussed and how we deal with uh, the homeless and what kind of housing uh, options there are for them. On Saturday, December 9th, was the annual Aldergrove Christmas Light Up Parade, where several members of Council attended. Council Long, as usual, was the MC standing uh, in the center of the of the route, where were you? What, you're at 272 or around that area? 271st, yeah, and Fraser Highway. Councillor Fox, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Davis, and Councillor Whitmarsh, and I uh, attended, and uh, it was a beautiful night for a parade, and I don't know who got the... Uh, Fox had a good bunch of lights around his neck, and Davis did. He, yeah, it was good. I don't know who else decorated themselves. You and your dog, uh, Puccini, was there. Excellent, thank you. So uh, as a real quick uh, mayor's report, uh, I just want to wish everyone uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So now I'm going to go into our um, year in review, and it's uh, been an exciting year. A lot of great things have happened in the township of Langley. Uh, we've had community plan updates. Um, we've had uh, advanced technology at the Langley Regional Airport and a multifaceted environmental strategy and infrastructure upgrades and TransLink and social development uh, events have happened. <laughs> Uh, the 216 census report came out, and uh, we learned that we are, in percentage, the fastest-growing municipality in Metro Vancouver. We grew at an average rate of 2.55% per year over the five years, about 12,000 new residents in the Township of Langley over a five-year period. And uh, as you can see, they're moving in here. Um, families are moving in all the time. The um, Brooksford Furniture uh, update was, uh, I see there's folks here who are still, still working on some of the some of the issues there, but uh, certainly uh, to see that uh, updated uh, was, I think, uh, quite an achievement for Council. have been working on it for quite a long time. It's also quite an achievement for the community to come together and work on such an important update. Uh, the, um, so, you know, kudos to Council and to the community uh, to, to uh, do that. It's uh, probably another 30-year plan to, to see that uh, Furnage community, the undeveloped area, to develop into a vibrant community, and we'll be seeing a a lot more new families moving into there as we continue to grow. Uh, the Aldergrove Credit Union Community Center is well underway, and this is a, a bit dated picture now. There's, it's, it's advanced quite a bit from this picture. This is a photo taken from the roof overlooking the, uh, the roof of the uh, new ice arena and recreation center, uh, overlooking the pool, which is right in the foreground, and uh, the, the lazy river and, uh, and the tidal pool. And uh, it's uh, going to be a fantastic uh, facility that's uh, not only going to uh, 
serve uh, all the Grove, but the entire township of Langley, and, and something that's unique in the region. So a new ice arena, 600-seat uh, ice arena, a walking track, uh, and a, a aquatic facility, and our council uh, is very proud to have put this uh, forward. And we also, uh, I think we, it's unprecedented, we got a federal grant of uh, close to $10 million to put towards this new community center. So the federal government uh, had recognized that cultural and, and um, recreational facilities are important in communities and they serve not just the community that they're situated in, but their surrounding community. And uh, we do appreciate uh, the support that we did receive from the federal government towards this project. And Alder Grove Credit Union uh, purchased the naming rights. So it's from now on called the Alder Grove Credit Union Community Center. And we thank uh, the great support we have in the community. And it was Canada 150 this year. Uh, so great things happened. Uh, the Township of Langley had a grant of uh, close to $500,000 to put towards projects. And one of the projects was the new amphitheater at Willoughby Park. And you can see uh, during the opening, uh, during the summer, there were concerts that were held every week. And uh, the, the amphitheater is absolutely beautiful. It's uh, tiered grass steps. People can sit there and relax, uh, bring the picnics. And the uh, stage itself is a Canadian flag uh, imprinted in the concrete. So this, um, this is a, a great asset to the community and thanks to a grant from the federal government and uh, the Township of Langley to put this forward. Uh, great outdoor space. Uh, in April, community volunteer Dale Ball was honored through the renaming of the park in Brookswood to the Dale Ball Passive Park. And a literary circle was opened at Double, Derek Doubleday Arboretum as a legacy to the Langley 2014 BC Summer Games. So just, a several, just several of the, of the great new um, advancements that we have in Langley. Translink, uh, you know, it's uh, been a long, long haul to start getting some better transit in the township of Langley, and we're starting to see some of the results of the uh, federal government. Um, uh, they uh, put a lot of money towards uh, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars towards transit in the Metro Vancouver region, and we're now starting to see that in Langley with uh, additional bus services, more frequent bus services, and uh, we got new service in Clayton Heights and uh, new service along 72 Avenue, between uh, 184th Street and 202B Street and connections to Langley Centre. Uh, so it's, it's a long process. We continue to work very hard to get more um, transit to our community. And uh, it's rewarding to see that we got some additional uh, routes. And, uh, and we're also getting a double-decker bus, I guess, pilot project to Carvel Exchange. Some major infrastructure projects uh, in the township of Langley. Uh, the 208th overpass is being uh, doubled, uh, the, it's uh, widening, it's uh, an extra two lanes uh, going on that. And that is um, initiative of council, and great to see that that will come to place. Uh, the 216th Street interchange is being constructed um, also at the same time, and which is expected to be complete in 2019, which will add more connectivity. Both of those bridges will add more connectivity uh, between North and South Langley, connecting Walnut Grove, uh, Fort Langley, Port Cals to, to the rest of Langley and Will to um, Willoughby. Uh, it's uh, great to see these uh, initiatives moving forward and working with our partners in the federal and provincial government to make it happen. And uh, we've got a new website uh, this year. The Township of Langley website was launched at 2L.ca in the summer of uh, this year, and it's uh, very multifaceted. I encourage everyone to, you know, if you haven't been there, take a look. It's an updated website. Uh, there's uh, lots, of, lots to see on there. It's easy to... Um, to navigate around, you can also uh, log in and receive uh, updates. Uh, log in and it makes it easier when you do want to access services that the township have to offer. Uh, you get your own login name and password and uh, just sign in and um, you can get access to a lot of our programming and, and that sort of thing. Langley Regional Airport. Uh, we have a fantastic regional airport that uh, the township of Langley's pride and joy and it's uh, a huge economic driver. Uh, just recently, Vector Aerospace opened up their new hangar, which uh, employs 200 people and brings uh, helicopters from all over the world for uh, retrofits and, uh, and maintenance uh, and just providing. And that's just one business there that, that does it. There's over 40 businesses. Uh, we're also um, uh, underway uh, building a new um, uh, terminal and office building, which will house uh, the uh, Nav, Canada, um, Nav Canada Tower and uh, terminal to service um, the traffic that's uh, coming to our Langley Regional Airport, a lot of helicopter traffic, and uh, need something like that. So there'll be new offices for the Township of Langley staff. A new, uh, the, the restaurant uh, is still, Adrian's is a great restaurant there. It's still open, and it'll be relocating in the new building once it's complete. So looking forward to that. Uh, so certainly um, a, a great asset in the Township of Langley, and uh, a lot of, um, 
improvements, uh, new paving, underground wiring, uh, lots of things have happened there. And of course, a history, our shared history, a historic context statement and thematic framework for the Township of Langley was created over the past year under the direction of a task force selected by the Township's Heritage Advisory Committee. The historic context statement explores and provides a chronological summary of the major geographical, political, and socio-economic factors and events that contributed to Langley's development. The statement features chapters on Langley's natural geographical setting, its enduring First Nations presence, the contract uh, period and establishment of the Hudson's Bay Company, the development of British Columbia as a Crown Colony, Canadian Confederation, and Municipal Incorporation, the Great Western Boom, the First and Second World Wars, and post-war Langley. So a lot of work has been done, and we do appreciate the work of, our, of the Heritage Committee and all, and all of our committees in, in what, they, uh, what they do. So it's a, a great achievement. And um, the Kwantlen's First Nation, uh, great neighbours uh, with uh, the, uh, the Township of Langley, approved uh, the transferring of a parcel of land that was uh, adjacent to the Kwantlen First Nation lands on the uh, north side of um, Bedford Channel. And uh, that, that occurred this year, and I know uh, we had a, a presentation or here in Council, and the Kwantlen First Nations came, and, and we're very thankful for what uh, the Council did. And Tourism Langley went through some, uh, some change, and uh, it's been reorganized. It's now uh, focused on Township of Langley uh, only. It's uh, a tourism, uh, an independent tourism board that uh, is looking to promote uh, tour. Uh, tourism in Langley to our surrounding region and to people who come to visit uh, from all over uh, Canada and the world and uh, doing a great job there. Some social initiatives uh, that are occurring within the township uh, and um, as many of you know municipalities you know we deal with uh, roads and planning and parks and pipes. Uh, social initiatives are generally uh, taken care of by other levels of government however we have a, a very important role to play uh, as uh, council and as a township, and that's to advocate and work with other levels of government and to, empl and to em employ the tools that we have to assist. Uh, a couple of uh, successes, uh, the um, uh, Langley Youth Resource Centre is underway and, and uh, it uh, is being built just, uh, just a few uh, metres from this building, uh, and that is an issue of, of uh, many partners uh, in the township of Langley, private and government, um, BC Housing, township um, provided the land and the servicing to it, and it will house five beds, emergency beds for youth, and also services will be housed in that facility for youth. Uh, there's, at this point in time, the uh, provincial government through BC Housing and Stepping Stone is uh, working through a process. Uh, they purchased the BC government, uh, BC Housing purchased the Quality Inn and are looking at uh, um, using that as a transitional housing, and that's something that will be coming to council probably in next year for rezoning. But at this point, they're going through a process, engaging with the community in, uh, in looking at what, uh, discussing what that will look like, and to uh, provide um, a resource that is between the Gateway of Hope, which provides emergency services and some programming, to getting people into housing, more sustained, um, more long-term housing. So, looking forward to see how that. Um, works out in the future. Uh, so we also got an ICM team, uh, Integrated Care Management Team that uh, Fraser Health and other partners have funded to come to the Township of Langley to work with people who are less fortunate, who are addicted and have mental health issues and get them into housing. And that ICM team just started in September. Uh, it's something that I know that both mayors, the Mayor Ted Schaefer and I have been advocating for for many years, for a long time. Uh, other communities had teams called ACT teams where um, they went out and, and worked in a holistic way with, with those who are less fortunate, and we now have a team here. So uh, I think it's certainly um, an area that we need to work together and, and uh, advocate for and to help those who are less f uh, fortunate. And here's a picture of the Lego block, uh, the uh, Youth Resource Centre being put together, and it's uh, modular. Uh, it's, uh, you, can, you can just see it just down the road here on 203, and it's a modular building, uh, two-storey, I believe, what, six, mo how many modules in that? Three in the bottom, three on top? No. Or more than that? The, Oh, okay, so Councillor Fox is integral in moving this forward, so it's exciting to see that, that come forward. So that's just on 20285-62 Avenue, and anybody wants to take a look at it. And we had lots of events. We, you know, got our shovels in the ground. We didn't get too dirty because we are members of council, but we did get our shovels in the ground. And uh, this is a dedication cer uh, ceremony for a maple tree that replaced the the dying maple tree in Fort Langley, and we all remember that great big maple tree. Is, it was planted in memory of uh, World War I vets uh, 
and this particular um, and from World War One, and uh, it had to be replaced. So we wanted to make sure it was done right, in, in recognition of the sacrifice of uh, those uh, members of the township uh, of Langley community who had gone to war and did not return. And so uh, we did this earlier this year. And uh, thank you to council. And I mentioned earlier in my uh, mayor's report, uh, the township of Langley uh, partnered with Kotlin First Nation, and uh, the. Uh, it's uh, Aboriginal business um, match and, and marketing, for, and um, we had there were delegates from all over British Columbia who came to this uh, event at the Langley Event Centre to talk about how uh, businesses, Aboriginal businesses, uh, can flourish, and it's focused on on those businesses. And it was great to host that in the township of Langley. And here you see a panel with our, our own uh, Peter Tillamello um, uh, talking about uh, working relationships between municipalities and First Nations. And uh, Tomea Notch, she's on council with uh, the, the Kwantlen First Nation. And uh, Brenda, it's slipped my mind now. What's her name? Brenda. Fernie. Fernie, thank you. I just slipped my mind. So Brenda Fernie, also with the Kwantlen First Nation, that did a great presentation. It was a great event. And, of course, uh, the cruising came to Aldergrove on a rainy day. And in September, uh, 778 show cars were on display, and $46,000 went to local charities and some and many uh, thousands of spectators uh, came out uh, and braved the rain and uh, just enjoyed looking at these beautiful cars. And we're looking forward to another successful uh, cruise in uh, to come back to Aldergrove uh, this fall. Uh, a great, another great event to just um, bring people to the, to the township. So that I want to, uh, uh, on behalf of Township of Lang Council, thank everyone for coming out and thank the residents for supporting Council and supporting the initiatives that we've been working so hard on. And uh, it's very, I'm very proud to see the achievements that we've had. But our work is by no means done. We'll continue to work over the next year and uh, have another great uh, year-end report a year from now. So uh, thank you very much. And at this point, I know there was um, some members of council had something to add for the report. I'm going to put Council Long on. Council Long. Thank you, Your Worship. You mentioned in your report about the thematic uh, his uh, history context that was prepared by the Heritage Committee. So I just wanted to pass the final edition on to Council. Uh, you, you saw a draft several months ago, but this is the final edition uh, with all the updates in it. So this is a copy for each of Council members. And I did want to bring to your attention as well. Yeah, there's two. Two. So you've got a summary and then the, uh, the background awesome. document. Thank so you. there's two, two of them make a set. Yeah, and okay. Petrina has some over there too. So she's she's uh, Councilor Anderson, who we co-chair the the committee. So I also wanted to bring to Council's attention item four in the distribution package, which is the Heritage Advisory Committee's annual report. You'll see that there's uh, many of the things that you mentioned in your report, Your Worship. Uh, we were happy to be part of, and uh, do appreciate the work of the the committee. There's 22 bullet points in the report of the, uh, the types of things that we were involved in all year. And I just wanted to bring one up that you didn't put in your report, and that was the, uh, the mile markers along Fraser Highway. That was another project of the Heritage uh, Committee that uh, we're very proud of, that uh, each, each mile is celebrated with a, uh, a monument that was originally put there many, many years ago, and we managed to relocate uh, the ones that were buried or, or in ditches, and we actually had uh, staff manufacture two or three to replace the other, so now they all are fully in, in place, and if anyone from the city is listening out there, we'd like them to finish their part. I think there's two mile markers in the city of Langley, and I know that the, the, the Surrey Heritage um, uh, Group are working perhaps on restoring the mile markers there. They go all the way from Chilliwack and beyond to downtown Vancouver, so one day they'll all be done. Anyway, thanks, Your Worship, and uh, do enjoy your copy of the thematic historic uh, context statements. Thank you very much, and, and you know, just on that, it's great that we have our advisory committees. There's the Heritage Advisory Committee, the Recreation Culture Advisory Committee, the Seniors Advisory Committee, and Economic Development and Agriculture Advisory Committee. And these are volunteers who work uh, with Council and uh, bring a lot of value to our community. So thank you to all the work that they've done all year. Okay, so with that, I'm going to move on. Just turn to we'll move on to um, items from prior meetings. And uh, this following items was referred at the November 27th, 2017 regular evening council meetings, highway closing and dedication removal, bylaw 5322. This is final reading. Now, Ms. Bauer, does it need to be moved and seconded or is it already based on the referral? It does need to be moved and okay. seconded as, as it was referred. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. A motion for final reading. Councillor Long, seconder. Do I have a second? Councillor Qualley. Any discussion on L1? Uh, Councillor Richter. Um, yes, this has been a very interesting um, highway closing 
uh, scenario, because normally when we advertise these uh, dispositions of roads, we don't usually get any response from the public. But in this particular case, we did have neighbors to the road that's being closed uh, indicate an interest in purchasing the property. Now, my understanding is in the past what has happened is when the roads were first formed, half the land was taken from the property owner on one side and half the land was taken from the property owner on the other side. Uh, in other situations in the township, what we've seen is both sides are given a chance to purchase the property if they're so interested in it. Um, sometimes both are. Most often it's one or the other that ends up purchasing the closed road. So we have a scenario here where we've got two parties that are interested in purchasing this road for different reasons. And so what I would like to do is defer final reading uh, so that staff uh, with a mediator can work out an agreement that is amicable to both sides uh, of, uh, of property owners to this road. So that would be my motion. Is there a seconder to that? Councilor Arneson seconds the referral to staff to work with the property owners that are adjacent to that. Yeah, is that to what see it was? if yeah. they can, okay. if we can come to an amicable agreement is around there, this. Is there a discussion on the referral? Okay, I'm going to call the question on referral on L1. It's a deferral, actually. Oh, sorry, Councillor Davis. I'm going to I'm going to call it again. I I um. I was too hasty. I thought you'd already voted. Okay, there we go. Call it again. Everybody's voted. Thank you. And the <laughs> deferral fails. Councillor Fox, Mayor Froze, Councillor Quali, Councillor Sparrow, Councillor Long opposed. So we're back to the main motion. Any further discussion on the main motion? Councillor Richter? I, I think that um, letting this go through without giving a fair opportunity to the Residents that live on both sides is just not the right thing to do. What's happening now is the uh, proponent for development is getting um, this land and the neighbors that live next to it aren't getting a say, and that's just wrong. Thank you. Council Long? Worship, I, I think we deferred it to this meeting because we did go out and uh, check with the neighbors, and, uh, and, I, and I think uh, it's now on Council's job to decide you know which way to move forward so we did that I'm thank happy you. to vote now thank you any further discussion on L1 seeing none I'm calling the question and it carries with Councillor Richter Councillor Arneson Councillor Davis opposed and we move on to other business and Councillor Arneson I'm going to put your mic on you have a, um, an item for other business yes thank you worship um, I just want to, uh, for the benefit of the, uh, the audience, obviously, and council. Um, so this um, motion to reconsider has now been uh, discussed, and it's been determined that um, elements of it will remain, but the wording will be changed. And so it is not, I guess, technically a reconsideration motion. However, I will, I will read um, the preamble, uh, not the entirety of the motion and then uh, itemize the numbers. So it says, a council request on the grounds of the referenced new information that the proponent address items one, two, and four contained within the original reconsideration motion. And then I have to uh, go to the actual draft. So I'll read those out. <laughs> Um, one, that BD Corporation and or its qualified professional confirms that the location and general design of the works are consistent with the information originally provided to the DFO and that any substantive deviations be forwarded to them for review prior to current authorization. Number two, that the DFO conduct a site review in order to determine the number and species of fish potentially affected by the relocation of the statutory right-of-way. And number four, that the Ministry of the Environment be consulted further to the application in order to ascertain compliance with all related provincial policies further to fish and riparian guidelines and legislation. Okay, sorry. And, oh, sorry. 
Is that a motion seconded by Councillor Richter? So, so Councillor Arneson, you wish to speak to it? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, the audience and council is spared, I guess, of all the verbiage I was going to bring forward further to the uh, original. But there are some comments that I, I would like to make. So um, the first one I'd like to refer to is actually a, a report that was written by Fisheries and Oceans Canada. And uh, very specifically, it refers to West Creek. And so I'm just going to give a, a couple of the excerpts from that. Um, it does point out that municipal policy and bylaws and development permit areas should really work effectively to maintain unobstructed fish passages. And number two is that increasing public awareness about the fisheries values of this system are required. And I would like to underline, I think, the last one. Um, more than anything, I, I really believe that what I am... Um, and other council members are attempted to do in this is to look at West Creek as a critical habitat area for our fisheries and to try and understand the connectivity between this area and the overall um, you know, fisheries situation that we have. Um, it is connected, it is important, and you know, habitat is one of the key considerations um, that we need to recognize. Um, you know, I, I understand that it is an industrial park there, and I do understand that there are certain logistical issues that need to be addressed when you're developing buildings, but I believe that our sustainability charter really sets out what our standard is supposed to be. It is not development instead of the environment. It is development that sustains the environment. And that is what I think is critical. And the reasons that I brought this forward is most particularly to work with our other partners to make sure that we are, as BD themselves has pointed out, want to have the highest environmental standards. And I think that we owe it as a council, to do our due diligence to make sure that this is an appropriate policy that's going forward and that we do any and all things to make sure that we are protecting our environment and most specifically our irreplaceable fisheries. Thank you. Council Fox. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I... Um, I think I understand what uh, Councillor Arneson's trying to do here, but um, I, in looking at the way this is uh, evolving in terms of how her motion is presently set up, um, it, it's uh, clear to me that, number one, BD Corporation and, and or its qualified professional confirms that the location on general design. Well... Um, we got uh, an informed report from a preeminent uh, environmental, Enviro West, Mr. Ian White, that basically dealt with that. Um, it was extensive. Uh, he put his professional reputation on the line and his history of dealing with issues such as this. And so um, he, in his report, talked about the design the location, and an assurance that the works are consistent with the, consistent with the original um, DFO mandate. I think that's been dealt with uh, very adequately by Mr. White. Um, we've seen a lot of reports come across our desk over the last few years uh, from Enviro West, and the quality of them, um, I would have to say he's probably the preeminent uh, environmental consultant in the uh, lower mainland at this point in time and across the province as well. Um, the DFO number two says that DFO conduct a site review in order to determine the number and, and species of fish potentially affected by the relocation of, of this uh, right away. And I think, again, if I could, through you, Your Worship, to Mr. Seffi, I think that was answered in the staff report. Am I correct, Mr. Seffi? There are no fish there at this point in time. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. The, uh, the system... Uh Upstream of the, uh, the the pipe, the, where the statutory right of way is, is uh, classified as a uh, yellow coated water course, which means that there is uh, fish nutrients present, but no fish. Uh, as far as uh, the information that the staff has is concerned, 
So, and obviously not within the pipe itself either. Well, and I guess one of the things I want to point out is the pipe is on this property, but the pipe continues far underneath highway number one there. It has to get to the south side of highway number one, so it goes through underneath highway number one. So the pipe we're talking about has got to be contiguous with a pipe that was put in in the 1960s in underneath highway number one. So I, I guess if we're talking about um, DFO, DFO needs to conduct a, a whole assessment of the whole area, including the pipe that's underneath highway number one, in order to really ascertain the effectiveness of this potential and, and fish potentiality. Because if there was fish, they would be uh, right on the south side of um, the freeway, and none have ever been spotted there, to my knowledge. Is that correct? I think that was reported as well. So there's no fish utilizing the existing or the proposed or the um, even the one underneath Highway 1. So I'm not sure that number two is, is always all that applicable. And then the f number four, I think, which was the third one, the Ministry of the Envi Environment be consulted further to the application in order to as ascertain compliance with all related provincial policies for the further to fish and repairing guidelines and legislation. Um, again, uh, do our staff, before they acknowledge and can present a report, have to live up to the MOE guidelines and provincial policies? My question again to Mr. Sefi. Sefi? Uh, Your Worship, the, the fact that there is no water course on the property and it's a, it's a pipe system uh, means that the fill as well as the provincial agencies, will likely have uh, either no comments or uh, or just simply say that they have no uh, no interest in the matter, or potentially say that there is no alteration or harmful impact to fish habitat as part of the relocation of the statutory right of way. Okay, thank you, yep. Councillor Richter. Um, I just find it very odd that the representative of the proponent stood in front of this chamber and talked glowingly about all the fish that were coming through that pipe. So, I mean, if the proponent has admitted that there's fish in the pipe, one would think it's a reasonable conclusion to think there are fish in the pipe. So I don't understand Councillor Fox's cross-examination of staff relative to this when the proponent themselves has admitted that there's fish there. Okay, finished. Okay, thank you. Councillor Long. Okay, Your Worship. Uh, okay, this seems to be in sort of a he says, he says, uh, staff have got one thing to say, the proponent, something else, members of council, members of the public. I guess the way that the motion's been now retooled, um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any harm in, uh, in requesting. The DP's been issued, and we can't recall it back. But if we've asked for some more information, members of council, I don't see any harm. I just wanted to look at number two here, where it says that DFO conduct a site review. I guess really it should say that DFO be requested to, because they may or may not want to or feel it necessary. So. Let's start off, maybe, Your Worship, by putting that in, that, the, uh, that there's a request to DFO to conduct a site review. Okay. Do you need an amendment for that? Or, uh? okay, if, if, um, if that's an amendment, and with the uh, unanimous consent of council, we can accept that as an amendment, and I don't see any disputes, so I'll add the word request uh, DFO to conduct the review. So that being okay. said, Your Worship, I think the, the, the three items in this motion now are simply requests for more information. The DP's been issued. I, I don't think there's any... Uh, uh, any stop work uh, going to be put on it or anything like that. There's some clarification required, and if, uh, if that makes everybody feel more comfortable and the little fish are, are happier, then uh, let's just do it. Okay. Thank you. Councillor uh, Davis. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, just comments on Councillor Long's he said, she said. That he said. He said, he said. <laughs> um, he said, they said. Gotta be careful. The, I, I, too, stood here, and um, the proponent... Uh, bragged about how healthy the stream was and how there was fish on the big catchment area south of the freeway. And I haven't been able to find uh, really anybody that would 
uh, admit that the creek runs through there. Um, uh, I feel that if we're um, on this motion, um, ah, geez, I had three or four things written down here and I can't. Um, I, I, I think what's happening here is we voted on this and what there, we don't we're I'm more in question now than I ever was and now that it's been uh, moved on to township property I'm I'm concerned about um, I'm concerned about liability and uh, uh, even though that this was done under 1987 rules if we're going to do it today we should do it under the new rules that lie today. So I have a, a, a notice of motion after this that I'd like to put on, but um, that with all the uncertainty, like I say, he said, she said, uh, I, I would just wonder where this went wrong, in my opinion. Anyhow, that's all thank I have you. to say. Councilor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, so thank you again for an opportunity to speak to this issue. Um, I think because um, of the change of the structure of the notice of motion, I just wanted to underline a, a couple of the reasons why I brought it forward. And it really was as a result of the staff report that we received in the discussion at our last meeting further to this conversation and proposal. Uh, because I distinctly recall my expectation was the staff report would include what I considered to be real-time feedback from the DFO having to do with this file, but instead what we got was the historical uh, contracts. Um, I'm not disputing that that is the case, but what I wanted to underline is the fact that this idea of fish habitat is not a static issue. It changes over time, and from an engineering perspective, I realize it might be convenient or helpful to try and characterize it as something. But from my perspective, if you have fish in and around the area, then I, that is why I think that we need to have the DFO involved, because in fact, all the mitigation and works that probably have taken place here have likely enhanced the habitat value. And this stormwater right-of-way pipe location, I, I think if we don't look into that, you know, we may be missing the boat. And I have a really good example. I hope I can still call it up on my phone. It's the city of Burnaby who's now decided to unearth a creek or daylight the creek after 50 years. So apparently there's no stale date for this process. It seems that once it was looked at as a place for fish habitat, they decided that they would do the right thing even after 50 years, and they've had wonderful results. So I'm just hoping that with some oversight, with some further review, we can look at what the most optimum outcome is in this situation. Thank you. Councillor Fox. Well, now that I've done my here's he says, she says stuff. I have to say that I think DFO and I think the Ministry of the Environment would rely extremely heavily on the professionalism, the history, the integrity of Mr. Ian White. I have absolutely no question of his qualifications or his ability to respond to or answer any question related to that. If, if they so desired, they can contact him directly. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion by council? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Uh, oh, division? Oh, uh, council vote. You um, would like to uh, motion for division. Is there a seconder for division? For division? That is pretty simple. Um, somebody second that. No. No? Okay, Again, fine. So no, we'll just fine. do one. Okay. I'm going to call the question on, what is it, N1. And the uh, motion carries. Councillor Fox, Mayor Foes, Councillor Quali opposed. And is there any other business? Uh, Councillor Davis? Just let me um, put you on. There you go. Councillor Davis? Yes. Could I make this a notice of motion? Sure. Um, I would like to... Uh, this is for development permit application 100890, 4825, 
to 75th Street. I would like to hire a lawyer to investigate two issues. Number one, the legalities of this. Number two, and the uh, liabilities of this, if this is in fact an extension of the stream. What happens when DFO looks at this in the future and who is going to be liable now that this pipe is relocated on public lands and not private lands? Okay, thank you. Any other business? Seeing none, motion terminate. Termination. Davis, seconder, um, Councillor Cawley, all those in favour? Opposed, carry. Yeah, short break and we'll move into the uh, public hearing.